I'm Joyce. So you are interested in our pencil at home virtual classroom. So now I'm going to tell you what you need to prepare in terms of material. So uh, when we design these projects, we want to make it uh, simpler and easier for parents to prepare for the material. So we keep using the same material throughout. So here, of course, you need a pencil and eraser some oil pastel so oil pastels are um, very similar to crayons but then their colors are stronger so not the chalky ones okay so a little bit sticky color pencils so it doesn't need to be a lot of colors maybe like 24 colors is that's enough or even 12 is enough we'll paint most of the time and then we want to use acrylic paint or water-based um, paint so not oil paint you guys can buy like tube size like this outside. Uh, if you cannot buy it, we have uh, these big jugs and then we can pour it into smaller cups uh, for you guys too. Also, you don't need a lot of colors. Uh, you just need like a simple rainbow color. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, and black and white. Okay, so that's all the colors you need. For the palette, uh, you can use paper plates. You can use um, these with the wells, like this one is made of ceramic, so plastic ceramic is fine. Or even, you can just have a piece of cardboard and then put some uh, wax paper on top too. When you need to um, squeeze the paint for the students, uh, just make sure you don't squeeze a lot. So we also recommend parents to squeeze the paint for them um, prior to class, we'll post all the material, all the colors you need for that particular project. When you squeeze the paint, uh, make sure you squeeze at a time just one part of your pinky side. So, so just this much of paint is enough, okay? Something like this on the palette, so very little. Because a lot of times we'll ask them to water it down. Have rinsing water. So I usually prepare two just uh, make it easier when they make one of them too dirty they can immediately have another cup of water uh, have something that's heavier do not use like plastic cup they may just kind of fall easily and also put the water away from your computer or um, elevate your computer so that you know in case it spill it doesn't spill on your computer um, have and then use like um, or use towels, doesn't matter. Like a dirty towel, handy, it's very useful for drying brushes um, and also cleaning up the brushes. And you can also use paper towel, but I see um, it's kind of wasteful. <laughs> a towel is good enough and you can reuse it. In terms of brushes, there are so many brushes and it's very hard to know which one is the right one. So we don't need a lot of sizes, we only need three. In general, one that's uh, I call it big. Basically, it's just a thumb size, like that. Medium size, like basically half the previous one. Okay, so this is the previous one, right? You see the difference. And then the last one is a pointy one, pointy and small, like this. Okay. So in terms of um, what type of hair you need to buy for the brush, these ones are synthetic hair. They are better for acrylic paint and also water paint. So they come in these golden color or white colors, okay? So when you touch them, it's really soft and, um, and but it still has a nice resistance to it, okay? What you shouldn't use is um, this type is like the bristle. So they are, you can kind of hear them too. They're very stiff. They don't absorb much. Uh, they're mostly for oil paint. Okay, so not this type. Also, not the super soft ones. Like these ones are just for watercolor. They are usually um, animal hair, like super soft. It's like those makeup brush, so not these ones. Okay. Lastly, we need to talk about paper. So, um, Make sure you have some type of watercolor paper, even though if they are not very thick, um, as long as they say watercolor paper, then they should be able to hold some water on it. Okay, so the paper I have been using in our classes um, is this one from Canson. Okay, so it's uh, the size is 11 by 15 inches, 
but if you don't have that size, it's okay. Like this one, I have another one's nine by 12, a bit smaller, but it's all right. Yeah, it's okay. So uh, this is 140 pounds. Even if you get 100 pounds or 90 pounds, it's, the, like, it's still okay. It wouldn't bend that much if um, not a ton of water pour on it. So I think that's all. I cover all the materials that we'll need. If you don't have those materials or if you have questions, um, just email us and uh, we may be able to provide or arrange uh, delivery or pick up for um, some materials, okay? what software you need to set up for the virtual class for Pencil at Home. So two things you need to um, download or install. The first thing is Skype. So you can go to the link provided and download for um, your laptop. So we do, uh, or your computer, we do recommend desktop version than a phone version because it's just a screen is bigger. You can see me easier. So once you download, then it looks something like this. And here, when you search, you can search Pencil Studio, well, it came out, <laughs> ca at gmail.com. So this is the way um, to make sure it is the right Pencil Studio. It should say Pencil Studio CA with the logo. And you can add me. Okay. So that's good. All right. So that's for the Skype part. The second part is you need um, Google Classroom. So we're using Google Classroom to um, make sure everyone has the in all the information about the upcoming projects. Okay, so it is very useful because it's a one-stop place that you can see um, the preview of the projects and also all the material that you need to prepare before the class. So for example, this one needs oil pastel, certain colors of acrylic paint. And also um, the different time slots and for different levels. And you will see a meetup link. So at different classes or different cl time slot has different links. And a link to book this class, all right? So how do you download this uh, Google Classroom? So also I'll provide you a link, basically uh, classroom.google.com. You will see something like this, uh, choose whatever Gmail um, that you need. It does need a Google account though. So once you hit continue, it will just add to here. Now you have it, it's very easy, okay? So you need to join um, my class. So here with the plus, hit join class. And then the code, I will also provide you it's basically this so it may change but um, here is what we're using right now so if you join already before this uh, video you're good you don't need to change the code or join again okay so all these Skype and also Google Classroom setup you only need to do once and then you are set all right so once you join you should see a post like this, um, we'll do different project per post. Uh, so it's easier to um, organize and see what project interests you. And then you look at the time and then you book, okay? Okay, so once you see a project that you're interested in, you can click this to book link. We're basically using the same system that we have for our normal classes. So the mind body system, uh, you can also see that on your app. Okay, so when you click inside, you can hit sign up now and then do the sign in that you have. Um, if you don't know your login, just email us. We'll provide you. Every student should have it. If you're new, just also email us or you can set up yourself using your kid's name. Sign up is a must to ensure you have a space. And on the day at around 10, maybe uh, five minutes early, you can just click on this link and start joining. it will just ask you to open to your own app. So here's me. So you can say, okay, join. Right, so the title of the 
chat should be um, the date and the time and the level that you register. So right here we have uh, three students apparently, and uh, that's Coco. Um, so you may want to see the instructor. Let's say Coco is the instructor, biggest, right? So you have all these other um, students. First, you drag them up to the top bar. You see it, it becomes highlighted, right? And you drop it. So it becomes smaller now, it becomes a little icon. So as this little lion, let's drag it up and become small. Look how big the Coco instructor is. Sorry, a bunch of um, mess around here. Another thing you need to do is um, if you look at me, it's kind of small, but oh, here's bigger. You see my background is by default blurred. So it's better to unblur it because if I want to if I'm a student and I want to show, oh, this is what I am right now, uh, it's very hard for me to see. So here at the bottom more, click it and say unblur my background. Unblur it. So here it's very clear to see, right? Okay. So make sure you unblur it, unblur it, and then um, minimize others. Okay. And then uh, in terms of do, should you mute or not mute, uh, I actually prefer a mute so I can hear the students and um, help them. Uh, but if sometimes uh, you get really noisy, I, uh, you can mute yourself too. You can maybe show your uh, kid how to unmute or mute themselves whenever they need to talk. Okay, so that's all uh, the tips of how to set up Skype a virtual class. So before the class, just review on the class um, Google Classroom what material you need. Put your computer in somewhere that's elevated like this so that in case there's water, it's fine. So on the palette, you can already prepare before the class so it will make it smoother. Make sure you know it's around just a fingertip size, just a little bit like this and so forth. You do other colors. So you have it arranged here. You have the water. Towel, maybe somewhere here. And so eraser, paper. This class needs pastel, like that, and then three brushes, different sizes. Okay, like that. You can also have paper towel around if you want, but usually a, a, a towel is better. Okay. All right, and then. Once you're all set, then you can go join the call. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Coco. Bye-bye. <laughs>